welcome, welcome. Come on in for a word of encouragement. Come on in. Take a moment to just let the week melt away. Come on in and let the week melt away. Yes, it's the end of the week. Come on in. Heavenly Father, we praise you, we bless you, and we thank you, Lord. We ask you to join us in our prayer session today. Lord, make this opportunity a teachable moment for us, a moment where the word gets inscribed onto our hearts, dear Lord. And when you give the opportunity, Lord, that we step out in bold faithfulness and share your word with others. Heavenly Father, we brace, we bless you, and we thank you for being with us here today. Dear Lord, I want to, um, everyone that is out there, I want to just talk about, I selected the scripture for today because it has come up since last Sunday. I've had imposters get in the way. I, I posted about that earlier, and Lord, I pray that you expose, you give us the gift of discernment and expose impostures that show, um, you know, show them to us, or show them to, to us that those that appear to be of an, an angel of light, but are really coming, are sent by the enemy to kill, still and destroy us, dear Lord. Um, we bind and we rebuke all these impostures. In Jesus' name I pray. So I had the opportunity, as I was saying, on Sunday to get um, interrupted during uh, as church service started, went on through all the church services. I tried to navigate through that. And then again, twice this morning, back to back. And then um, during the week, my daughter had a similar attack. And so I wanted to read here, starting from Matthew 24. And I'm going to entitle this, uh, it says, do not do not let anyone mislead you. That's the opening of Jesus' comment in verse 4 in Matthew 24. Jesus told him, Do not let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. They will, be, they will deceive many, and, will, and you will hear of wars and threats of wars. But do not panic. Yes, these things must take place, by the, but the end won't follow immediately. Nations will go into war against nations and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes and many parts in many parts of the world. But all of this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. And so I stopped at eight and it all continues down this path. But when Jesus tells the disciples, the disciples ask him, Heavenly Father, for you know, as he, they ask him for the signs of the end of the world, when is it coming, right? For the signs of judgment day. But when God, and when will God fulfill the hope and the promise to the Jews? But what God says, do not let anyone mislead you. The fact is that wherever you look, there's signs, there's uh, predictions, there's, um, uh, there are uh, conspiracies, and we become very susceptible when we begin, and we become very uh, susceptible to being deceived when we're just following the signs. Instead of following the Lord and following his word and leaning on him, there are so many false prophets around with counterfeit, around the world with counterfeit signs of spiritual power and authority. This, on, this the only sure way... Um, to keep from being deceived is to, again, focus on Jesus, the Messiah, and his words and nothing else. Don't look for signs, uh, predictions. Don't lean on others. Don't spend time looking for other people. Look at Jesus. Look for the Lord. Spend time with the Lord. Read his word. Every generation probably wonders, is probably wondered if the wars they see may be the end of the world. Can you imagine when Jerusalem was destroyed in AD, 70 AD, what that must have looked like to the Israelites? They surely thought it was the end of the world. Surely, it, for those that lived through World War II, again, it says that all nations will come together against each other. And can you imagine that, um, you know, them thinking that uh, at that time, that the, um, the wars were sure indicated that it was the end of the world. 
And now what we face, we've had terrorist attacks, at least through my generation, nuclear attacks we've had. Um, we've experienced this pandemic that we've been going through. But God, we got to remember that God still rules. He's the one that's in control. He'll decide when Jesus comes back, when he commands him to come back. So I want us to stay faithful to the Lord, stay focused on what he's got for us, pray, read his word, um, rebuke imposters, pray that the Lord will give you the gift of discernment to be able to tell the difference when someone comes into your life that is not of him. Okay, so beloved brothers and sisters, I want to remind you that God cares and he loves you and he walks with you everywhere you go. And if you're not walking with the Lord now, maybe you've walked away from him or you never have. It is a good time to get reconnected with the Lord. So I'm going to extend my hand out to you virtually. And all you have to do is repeat after me. Gracious God, I am a sinner. Please forgive me for my sins. I repent. And I believe Jesus died for me. And by his blood, I am forgiven. Lord, I ask you to come into my heart. Search it, cleanse it, Lord. Anything not of you, cleanse it away, Lord. Give me a new heart. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Amen. I want to thank you if you prayed that prayer, but if you're not sure what to do, please leave me a comment down below. Leave me a comment down below. And when you're doing that, leave me a comment of what you're grateful for as well. Drop that in the comments. I always love to read those and send you notes back and enjoy it. So again, if you're not sure what to do as a new believer, call me. Uh, send me a DM and or leave me a comment down below and we will pray together and we will get you into a solid Bible-based church that will guide you, will teach you how to walk with the Lord. Until next time, beloved brothers and sisters, be blessed. Bye now.